Hello and welcome to this new video. I'm Chris and I'm doing another Sync the Stories video here. Um, and today we're going to continue talking about Tin Tin. And uh, con by continue I mean um, I've already recorded a couple of these videos, but this is actually the first video in um, the panel 33-A2 series. So there will be a handful of videos uh, in which I redraw and analyze and talk about panel 33A2. And uh, so this is the first of these videos. And since this whole idea is rather fresh, rather new, I haven't actually established a, a perfect um, format. So I'm still experimenting a little bit with that, what to put in these videos, because the whole series will be many hours long. All right, so this is the first video then. And in here, we're going to talk about composition and context or rather perhaps context and composition the difference being that we talk about the context first and then we talk a little bit about composition and so so this the whole point here today then is uh, outlined here on the screen we have two rows that we are going to fill with frames or rough, very rough descriptions of the Tintin panels. And um, so, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to discuss the panels that are surrounding our, our focus panel, if I may call it that, to, to try to talk about why this panel is made the way it is. So we have a, like a logical explanation, logical background, logical sort of setup, so that when we actually do draw the panel, we can explain why things are constructed in the way it is. And we can also discuss possibilities that Hergé himself may have encountered once he, when he was actually doing it himself. So I, I'm having here, and but before we start, uh, I'm also going to say at this point uh, in time, that I will not be showing any original Tintin art here because this is not um, th this is not part of of my sort of uh, I don't own Tintin materials, so I don't have the copyright. I don't have any legal um, backing, so to speak, to to be able to do that. So. So even though you may encounter many, many, many videos with with uh, the panels depicted, um, those those authors and those channels uh, may have to um, get some consequences for for that. So, but I don't want those kind of consequences. I want to keep this channel nice and legal and um, so I'm only going to draw Tintin here. I'm going to sketch Tintin. I'm going to refine Tintin. I'm going to ink Tintin. I'm going to color Tintin. I'm going to talk about Tintin. I'm going to analyze Tintin. So I'm basically going to do all all things, but not show the actual 
original frames by Alger and and his t team of of uh, illustrators at uh, Studio Alger. So, okay. So, but before we start, I'm just going to do as I usually do. I'm going to show a quick picture of uh, my promotion, my promotion picture, so to speak, which is the uh, my own comic book series, which is called Unlimited Danger. So this is Unlimited Danger season one and the first comic book, first printed comic book in a big format. It's a Tintin-like sort of style uh, comic book and it's soft cover and it's 40 pages and it's full color and it's very nice printing and nice paper and all that so so this is uh, the project I'm working on now and um, so this is and well, what we see here of course is is the hero this Barry Riley in trouble once more and um, this is, uh, of course, a science fiction action thriller adventure. And here we're on the back cover, we see the eight uh, books that are projected but not finished. So we have eight volumes, eight uh, printed books in the pipeline, so to speak. So this is the project. And the first installment, as I, as you can see here, is, is the first book is 987 degrees centigrade. All right, so let's get on with the video. So let's get back to Tintin now. And we can... So, wha so what I'm going to do now here is I'm going to quickly, or not quickly, but, but uh, uh, do some rough sketches here of the surrounding panels. So what we're talking about here is, first of all, it's the Castafiore Emerald. And in French, of course, this is Le Bijou de la Castafiore. My French is not the best, but something like that. And this was, um, this album was originally um, released or I mean it, it was first published in the in the uh, Tintin magazine Journal Tintin and uh, in I think it was 1961 or something like that in the late summer of 1961 and I think it ran for something like uh, a year 12 months or 14 months or something like that um, but you can check that out I, and I think the first published in, in book form so to speak and then they took that and I think it was published in 1963 or something like that but, but anyways it's, it's a nice album so, so what I'm doing here then is, is we are the focus panel the focus panel of, of this video series is that we're going to draw panel A2, alpha 2, on page 33. So that is the focus panel. But in order to explain that, and this will be down here in this row here. So this row here, the second row, um, represents uh, the top of page 33. So perhaps I can, perhaps I can put this up here as a. Let's see if I can get some color. Take some red here, perhaps. Page 33. And this is row one, or row A, as I call it. 
row A, first row. And this row up here is page 32. And it's row D. So it's the last row on page 32. Row David. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to try to sketch the the relevant panels now. And let's let's zoom in now and we can so we can get some um, so we make it a little rough now. So we can get some colors or less panel frames. Okay, then I'm going to so let's see if we can. So I'm using my brush here. I having a four point so the red lines are just my sort of template for the question is how long we should make this something I think something like that this is not exact because this this exercise is just like a a quick storyboard version so we are Or sort of just wanting to talk a little bit about the sequence of frames here. Something like that. So on row D on page 32, there, uh, there will, will be only two panels. And this is unusual. It's very seldom that RJ only has two panels in 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 a row. Why? Because he needs many panels in order to get his story pulse, if I may call it that, the story pulse, the story pace pace or pulse or speed or to get so you need many frames and normally if we count I, can, I sit here and count I have uh, page 32 here on my left monitor which you can't see but uh, so I'm counting here two four six panels on the first row two four on the second one that's 10 and then we have 3 plus 2 so 15 panels on the page in four rows and um, so there, there there are 15 panels still even though he, he only uh, squeezed in two panels on the last row so that's amazing so he and this is a uh, contrary to the modern way of, of sort of designing comic books. It seems that the trend is to to make as few panels per page as possible, which sort of destroys the whole idea of of um, a good story because a good story needs many frames. So comic books are not only about drawing uh, big, impressive art. It's about telling a story. And if you don't have any frames, then you can't tell a story. Then the, the whole story just becomes a bunch of text. Because you have to... You, you have to so, so that's what I'm... Uh, that's my take on it. So Arge, um did the right thing, according to me at least, and he used many frames. Okay, so we have two panels on 
on row D on page 32 and then we have let's see how many we have we have three frames on three panels on down here on page 33 the first row there so let's see if we can approximately again here a little bigger perhaps and whoops Let's see here again right can fix a little down there it's not the whole world if this is not perfect at this stage and then uh, a well almost almost as wide this one is going to be but it's well make them like that Okay. We'll just remove a little bit here. Okay. So now we have those and now we can Oh, I put it in the same. Okay, let's let's keep the red then. Okay. All right. So let's have it like that. All right, so now we are going to talk about this area here, and this area is the area for panel A3, which we're not going to deal with at all. So, because this is okay, maybe I should write this up here in plain. This is our target panel for this series. This is 33-A2 as I said before. So this is the one we are going to draw actually. Alright, so now let's see if we can find out what happens in these. So now I'm going to write content here which is the drawings and now let's start to draw in the first on page 32 so we have d1 first and in d1 we have let's see if I can get my notes I have a whole bunch of notes here while I'm drawing it's maybe we'll see how it goes okay so I am now in the content layer so I'm I'm drawing below the frame here and I am just having that that multiply so we can see through so we have and now we're also going to select the color so we can get some maybe we can just sketch it in blue what do you say maybe it could be nice and maybe 50 percent and let's go up in scale a little bit and brush for so what we have then is we have a the usual balloon here covering the whole width of with width of the panel we have another balloon here 
which is even higher. So this is three lines here. Okay, and this is four lines here. So one, two, three, four lines of text. And then we have Professor Calculus here. His hair sticking out like that. And his body is going down approximately here. And then he sort of moves. So he's moving to the right. Like that. And then he has his legs here. Something like that. And his el elbow sticking out uh, here also. So there are many things we can say about this, but for now I'm just going to say that this is a professor of calculus. He's running and he's running to something he wants to see. So there are, so there is Mo there are motion lines here and there is some sweat dripping here <laughs> or some something like that and then we also have a wall here with some structure here some structure on the wall So, okay, so so what this is doing here is that Professor Cackles, he's, he's running. And in this speech bubble here, a speech balloon here, which has a tail, which he puts here to the very right, because there's so little space. He says that he wants to see this, whatever it is. I'm not going to spoil everything, but all right. So, all right. So, but then there is another voice saying something here, here with with his warning, Professor Calculus, Professor Tournesol, in French. Um, his warning. going on here and and the interesting thing about this dialogue here is that even though there's only one character namely the the main character um, calculus there is still a conflict and there's a drama in it because he is stating something here in this balloon but there is an objection here. There's a resistance here coming from someone else saying something. So it's an interesting example of drama in a panel where there is only one character drawn. So I thought that was something to think about. So the question here, you, you, we could ask, well, who, what, what is the objection about, or what, what is this resistance, or this warning, or what is it about, and who, who says it, and why is it so, like that? So that, that's interesting.
so so this is uh, this is uh, something that is uh, this situation is uh, something that we would call like a script writer, screenplay writer. He would say something like uh, off screen in his script. So you may so you may you may hear him in the movie saying something, but he is not visible on the screen. And this might be very effective. Because the thing is that by doing so, we really do focus very much on this person, Professor Calculus in this case, that is left alone on, on the screen or in the panel. So that is uh, typically working. Also, what, what we note is that he's running to the right. So we uh, and we if we look in in the album here of course this is this is we are on the left hand page page 32 is a left hand page and the usual I mean it doesn't matter really because it's uh, all pages when we when we westerners I'm a westerner so to speak and born and raised in Europe and so so I read books whether they are uh, academic textbooks or or uh, novels or whatever they are we read from the left to the right so whenever we um, put people in motion or put um, cars in motion or airplanes in motion or trains in motion I think what you you will find mostly is that they have a tendency to always or most of the time move from left to right so so th because that is the, the sort of the way we read panels here in the West at least so that's so we so what I'm saying is that we don't we don't picture him running from the right to the left because then it wouldn't be a continue uh, the, it wouldn't be a natural flow to the next panel which comes here so by doing so we sort of transition ourselves into the next panel so that's a, an important point. And because of this, that the movement is to the right, we also uh, see that Hergé has placed him to the very right in the panel itself. I mean, we could, we could, uh, let's see if we can, we could, uh, grab the whole layer and we, we, we could technically have put him like there in the panel but we don't so this is this is to to sort of uh, get get a f motion and this le and putting him in on on the sort of like the the right half of the panel uh, area uh, by putting him here instead then we have good good uh, we have room for for space here so that we can see that he's moving very quickly and, and like that we have space for the motion lines and, and uh, effects and like that so that's interesting And then also what we want to think about is the balloons here. Why are the balloons arranged like this? Well, they are arranged like this because he is moving to the right. 
so there's no possibility of arranging the the balloons any any other way if we we want like to remain to have as much text as we want here so um so the so the other objecting person he must he must be, 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 be okay so we can say like that because he is positioned within the panel to the very right then his balloon must be connected up here it must also be at the very right it can also be at the very left but it it, it should be um, at the very right at least and because of that there is um, little space left and and it also must be on the top right because he's the first speaker so because it has to be at the very top and because it has to be at the very right uh, there is no possibility of the 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 second balloon to be put at the top or, or to the to the right of this one so so the only place to place it is below all right so that's one thing and also we note here at the that there's a very simple background and it's very uh, there there are no details very much except um, there are some things that I forgot to draw which are the there are some there's another motion effect here like one of these whirls and then there is there are a few chords lying around here and these chords are of course a not there just for decoration but they are a um, signal that something will happen So, so this is um, okay. So I think we'll I'll stop there with that panel, um, and I'll get back to a, a, an aspect of that after we do the other one here. Okay, so now we take the a tricky one. So. Uh, here's a tricky one. Let's adjust this a little bit there. Okay. All right. Um, so now we have the big one here. And what is happening here, there are so many things happening, so it's hard to explain. But as we saw here in mm, D1, We, uh, Professor Calcos is running to the right and in this big scene here he comes gliding down on the floor somewhere around here I don't know how he he sort of stumbles on the chords or something so he he's his head is forward his arms is out like that and his glasses are here somewhere hard to get this right uh, but okay I'm um, sort of let's just fix it up a little bit so we can see better. Um, 
maybe the head is here. Like that. So he is falling forward. So he's falling to the right slightly. And it's in the doorway. There's a doorway here. And Tintin is just standing here looking down at Calculus when he's falling. Okay, so Tintin is there. And his leg is, comes there, something like that. And we don't see the... These are high doors. So this, this, these are not the normal doors. These are like the the castle kind of doors were I don't know how many feet they are but 12 feet tall I don't know I mean but they're they're pretty massive now okay so then we have so this is the sort of the center of the scene He's not totally in the foreground, not in, even in the middle ground. He's a little, actually, he's little. Maybe we should just make this smaller. I think I think I drew him too big. So let's just rescale a little here. Just let's make him a little less, uh, so he's more. I think that's little better maybe, maybe it wasn't so bad after all all right do like that okay so the mid and then we should perhaps also Also draw the the wall line here like that just to mark it out and then the there's the the door is open here but we it's it's a little there are too many things happening here so it's hard to okay so now over here we have many people there's there there's one group of people to the right hand side which is they are approximately here group a and then we have group 2 here which i will actually do like this there's group B and C, we can say. And this is about composition, because we are having the most important person, I think, um, is this person who is standing. There is a person standing here. And he has his back... Uh, uh, towards us who are looking so he has he is standing like that with his hands there and his arm and he is probably in, he's involved in the, in the cameras there are cameras on the on the castle and he's sort of he's probably involved in that okay so this person he's looking and, and and but the important thing with him he is in the very foreground no other person in this big panel is as much foreground as he is so he's sort of 
an important component in, in, in establishing a 3D uh, sort of a depth of the picture. So, and he has his other arm here. And just like Tintin, he has his, has his uh, rolled up the sleeves there. So. Okay, so that's one. So I think he's the most important one. Because, uh, but then you, you have another one, another guy here is looking, but you can't see him as closely. Uh, he's standing over here somewhere, and he's fixing with his camera equipment here somewhere. Yeah. I'm not exact now. This is more rough than anything, so I, I'm not. Um, but I'm just explaining what. Uh, what kind of people are on the scene. So you have one one man there and then he's cutting off his leg there. Ashe. So there's one and the cam one of the cameras is is here. And these big wheels and, and like that. So, but anyway, so this this is one person, but he's he's more in the middle ground, I could say. And this is the foreground person over here, which I think is more important. And and then we have this group of people here. We have the Castafiora herself, who's sitting here on. on a on a sofa or, or like a small sofa or and he's she, she's probably sitting here with another person as well I can't see this perfectly here exactly how how it's drawn but, it, but there's another man leg here also and she's turning her head towards, of course, towards the door opening here. So, and his head is also turned. Everyone's head is all, all and there. And then you have two more people here. Two more people. Quickly drawn here. Two more people. And then there's another. Irma. Person here in the background. And then there's a sofa here. Exactly how that works. But so this is the so so the focus of of this panel is of course in the middle here you have the falling Tulnesol, the falling professor calculus. But he is in uh, the, the interesting thing is that his his scale the scale of him is quite uh, small compared to for example this guy guy in the in the foreground here but but the scene works anyway so so th and that's so amazing that even though he is in such a small scale the whole scene works so very well and there are of course cables here also in the to he's falling on the cables presumably anyway so okay so we have then um and there are more cameras here in background so so but the whole point here is that this is a big panel and and the interesting thing is that even though it is the last 
panel on the page, it's still um, a, uh, as an establishing shot. This is what I'm thinking is, is very important. It's an establishing scene. Why is that? Well, it's because this panel here before, it's actually, as I see it at least, that uh, it's a transition shot. It's a shot in which you see a character or a vehicle uh, just going from one place to another. And that signals, to me at least, that he's switching the scene. It's not, um, it's not that he's just walking around in the same scene, but he's, he's soon entering into new territory. And that new territory is uh, this big panel here to the right, the D. David II panel on page 33. So this is an actual establishing shot uh, for the new scene which is coming up. And, and if you actually go back and look at the colors here, which is interesting if you go to the original um, book, uh, you can see here that the wall color here is something like pink. But in this uh, scene here, the 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 wall color is light bluish, kind of. Uh, so, so it's clearly um, transition to a new, um, to a new face, a new scene. So we are all in all we have nine persons in this um, setup here in panel D2 and the interesting thing is that here over here and over here and tint in including Tintin and including the falling guy uh, we have seven of them are depicted in full height so it's, it's a full shot so it's a, we, c we could classify this as a, as a wide screen or a wide angle shot where only two persons are cut off we have this Irma uh, character at the very back here and then we have this front guy where where he is he's cutting uh, cutting him off um, in the middle of the legs there so that's one uh, so also, uh, and also, um, an, an interesting aspect of this panel here is that the the scene is very theatrical. I would ca call it. It's very like uh, dramatic or tumultuous, or it's very like um, lots of. Uh, I don't know what to, what to call it, but it, it's a lot like action and and uh, sound and uh, noise and uh, yeah. Well, you I think you get the point. So it's uh, it's sort of the perfect, or I I would say it's a per perfect Arge ending of a page. It's sort of. It's a, it's a crescendo at, at the very end of the page. So so we sort of as a reader you have to 
you have to turn the page. Well, in this case, you don't have to turn it, but you have to go to the next page, which on, is in, in the right-hand page on the on, in the comic book, in the printed comic book. So it's 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 very um, it's very good in that sense. Also, there is lots of action at, at the right as a, like a cliffhanger kind of construction. Okay, and the last thing I forgot to do in this panel here was to to um, show you where the there is only one there's only one um, balloon here and it comes here sort of a, sort of a scream here and it's of course coming directly from Bianca Castafiore. Like that. And there's big text here. One line of big text. Okay, so that's so we're setting that up. So we have a recap. We have the transition panel from the previous scene, or we could say it's, it's the last panel from the previous scene. We sort of acts like a transition into our new scene here, and. And after this wide angle shot, what does Ajay do? So this is so we have a sort of like a full shot here, like with depicting uh, like like using the almost the max height of the panel to draw calculus in in profile here. And um, but then he's zooming out here, so he's zooming out big time, right? So his, his calculus is very small in this. So he, so so he's using sort of this as as I said as a as an established shot, but it's not really an establishing shot either. So I I just want to say that this is a re establishing shot so he already have uh, he already described other parts of of this room in other panels uh, on previous pages so it's not that it's the first establishing scene it's just an establishing scene to this sort of the 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 coming panels there, there are different. Uh, I mean, different uh, directors. They talk about establishing scenes in different ways. But, but when I'm using the term, I'm just talking about the scene aspect. So you can have many, many establishing scenes in 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 one movie or in one comic book album it's not just that you have just one i mean the most typical one is of course the like a marvel splash page on, on page number one and then oh it's an established scene but but there are so many other um established scenes um in store in, in at least in the tintin albums they, they, but they are not drawn as as a splash screen. They're drawn as a normal panel, but they're still acting as a splash screen. So, so this is of course a good example that you don't have to have a splash page 
to have an establishing scene. So here you do it in just a, an ordinary panel on one on a part of a row, even though of course in this case the panel occupies seventy percent of the, the the width, but um it nevertheless works. Okay, good. So now we are ready for page 33 and to talk about the first panel there. And I have to flip my... Okay, so we have... So in this number... So this will be A1 then on... This is... 33 row A and this is panel A1 and this is A2 then okay so let's zoom in here and what happens here well here we have first of all one balloon and the balloon is has approximately three lines of text three lines of text just marking it out as like that and here we see then also in full height we can say because the reason I'm doing I'm, I'm drawing the balloons first is that um, and I have this as a habit from my from my own work is that by by drawing the panel drawing the balloon first we we automatically uh, show what we have left of the panel to draw in so it's not that so so it's sort of the it's the natural delimiter of what we how we can compose the rest of the panel so so I think it's a good uh, so we always have to know exactly how big balloons we want before we start drawing that's my usual rule okay so we now we have that so now we know that we cannot draw the characters much bigger than up to the balloon and of course if I did it I wouldn't even go that far. I would go up here at the max. But Alger doesn't do that. He 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 go he he goes up here, even above the balloon. And this is Tonasol. This is Professor Calculus here with his strange hair. <laughs> And then he has this, and he's leaning forward, sort of, because he he hit his knee or something. So he is he's sort of grabbing his knee with his arm here, like that, and then he. Something like that, and then he stands something like that, and and then still there is a, and then there is, okay, I'll, let, let's save that, okay, and then like that, and we have this is not so pretty, but. Then we have some complicated arm wrestling here with Tintin here. Tintin. <laughs> his Tintin is holding, grabbing his hand, and Calculus is grabbing Tintin's hand. So it's um, and they, and he's standing something along like there. And his hair go also goes up there in the balloon. 
and just quickly here and his, his pants usual pants here and they are standing there and we have snowy over here Milu Milu is here and actually I think maybe this is just a just a uh, some kind of some kind of uh, illusion or something but I think in the original here I think Milu is is 10% too big <laughs> I don't know I mean maybe but or is maybe it's just some artifact of some uh, perspective or something I don't know so we have the wall coming here and we have some details here coming up so and then we have some lamp which he obviously fell on or he he sort of the lines some kind of spotlight or some kind of some other light that they're using in in the in the shooting all right and then we have some other door here something like that and then he's angry we have the usual angry marks coming out and then um, we have another balloon which looks strange but all right so and then we have a question mark in here and just one so so we have three characters then we have the professor calculus to the left we have Tintin in the middle and then we have Milou down to the right here but we could say perhaps that, that the, the spotlight here is is also a fourth character here and uh, like that so but strictly speaking that's what we have let's see what kind of notes I wrote up for this one so so this is the the panel where professor calculus is complaining he starts complaining and he's angry and he's complaining about something and the interesting thing here is that his complaints in this panel is on a very general um, in a very general sense he's not he's not exactly expressing himself what, what what the what the problem is he's he's just saying something rather vague which is why Tintin has his question mark here so Tintin doesn't really understand what is what what this should be or what, what how how he should interpret the, the situation. So maybe maybe the question is, what is it that Professor Calculus really is angry about? Maybe that is the sort of idea.
All right, another thing I have here is that if we zoom out then, if we compare these two images here, that the wall here, I said this before, that the wall here was blue. And in this image here, on uh, at A1 here, on page 33, the wall is also blue here. So this gives us the sort of natural continuation. It's not that this frame has the pink background as, as this wall had. So so we see we see that there is this that the scene actually was an establishing scene, we could say, or re establishing scene. Another thing, of course, also, uh, I may, perhaps I shouldn't say this, but, well, it's obvious that this is a, like, more rectangular balloon, and this is a more round balloon. And I think this works pretty well. I'm also adopting this myself, that if, if there is a question mark or something like that, or maybe even a, an exclamation mark, we can have uh, like like a single exclamation mark or a single question mark. We can have a, a round balloon instead of a rectangular balloon. But one thing that I find peculiar in this uh, is is that the the pointer points to Tintin's waistline more than to his mouth so so this is uh so like a i well this is sort of like a plan plan b plan c plan d kind of thing that uh if all else doesn't work then you you'd have to do this or something but oh uh, okay i'm not but it's it's an interesting thing to think about how to how to get everything into a panel nicely. Okay, so that's A one and then let's do the A two our target um a quick one there too, so and in A2, we have this super big super big um, balloon, speech balloon here, where lots of text is going to be. So I'm I don't know how how to do this so I can can be predictable but maybe I can do like this something like this uh, because I know that there will be eight lines in the French edition I don't know how many lines in the English or German edition or but eight lines in the original edition from 1963 all right and then we have uh, then we have uh, mr calculus here or professor calculus right and we have a close-up it's now a close-up and his Color and his. This is not really to scales. It should be a little different, but but for now, and we have his big beard or mustache, as you say, and then a beard down here. And then his glasses. And 
and funny hair. And a big ear. All right, so that's something like that. And then we have Tintin on the right. And once again, he, his head here, his forehead, goes into the balloon. And the balloon goes down there. And then Tintin's head is a little lower this time. Which also could be discussed why that is. And But then we also have a hand coming up here, which is interesting. Like that, so. So Tintin is here. And he does have an ear also somewhere. Okay, so the difference then here is, is interesting, I think, because as I see it, we we get the sort of like a like a um, like a series of shots where we gradually zoom in on Professor Calculus first. So we sort of so th so this the the D two panel sort of acts as as a restart so to speak. So here in D one, he comes running, but we have a a pretty it's a full shot. I mean we see his head and we see his shoes and we see everything in profile, and then he comes. Um, uh, falling down in, in, in the door here. But at that time we have Hergé has z zoomed out. So we can sort of restart a another round of zooming in. So here and, and here then in A1 we are back to approximately the same uh, scale as in D1 and from there we go even further so we, we and then we go close up in both calculus and Tintin and I think this works well here so that so so f first he ha we have the wide angle shot up here and then we zoom in on calculus a little bit well not not a little bit we get the, get the the full to all to almost to the full size of the panel and he starts complaining a little but then the complaint here in a2 is much more specific so here he really explains more about why it is that he's a so angry and here of I, I forgot to to draw the or I should make that these anger lines he's he's so angry and uh, his his eyes is very right so so I think that as a whole it's it's working very well and I think it's a it's a nice thing to have in in our back of our head when we're doing our own comic books that we can we can see we can use a wide angle shot as sort of like a, the start of a zooming in sequence or is a sequence of, of frames or sequence of shots sequence of panels
that's what I think. All right, so this is the um, this is sort of the summing up of the context and composition video here, and so now what our next step is, we're going to talk more about what is happening in um, this A2 panel, and we're actually going to really draw it and, and really try to learn what the style is and how, where to exactly put things and the uh, according to Arge's uh, sort of sensibilities and then we can think about if we want to do it on our own if we, if, if we really want to do it that way or if we do it uh, slightly different or maybe totally different depending on um, what what our stylistic sense is telling us. All right, so I hope you have enjoyed this video and uh, just want to remind you again here about my my little project of 987 degrees centigrade, which is only f the first installment, but it still is a uh, it's a major step uh, and it's the real uh, deal in terms of action and danger and thriller and drama and romance and everything so it's a uh, action filled and it's a lot of fun so unlimited danger season one 987 degrees centigrade thank you very much See you in the next video.